Hi, this is Michael Orle from MobileBurn.com. Today we're going to take a look at the LG Optimus 3D. It's the first Android-powered smartphone with 3D capabilities to be launched on the market. So here we have the Optimus 3D. You can see we've got a 4.3 inch display and it's 480 by 800 pixels. Touch sensitive buttons down at the bottom. 3D capable LCD, uh, no glasses required and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. On the left hand edge we've got covered micro USB and HDMI ports. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the power standby button up on the top. On the right hand edge, volume controls and then the 3D button, it's not a camera shutter button. Down the bottom is the microphone pinhole and a pry point for removing the rear cover. And of course on the rear of the device itself you can see we've got the dual 5 megapixel cameras for 3D stills and video. LED flash, speaker grill as well. It says 3D stereoscopic here on the metal back plate. And I'll just quickly remove the cover. To show you, we've got a 1500 milliamp hour battery, SIM card slot, and an unused micro SD memory card slot. Uh, the device has 8 gig of internal storage right off the bat, and you can add your own micro SD card. The Optimus 3D is about 12 millimeters thick, but it's pretty heavy, 171 grams. Uh, speedy, though, you can see we've got LG's uh, custom main menu system here. It's powered by the dual core. Uh, TI OMAP 4430 processor has uh, DDR RAM, dual channel access to the RAM. Really supposed to be very speedy, although um, quite honestly it doesn't seem all that much faster in uh, normal applications. It's so when you're going to get to some of the 3D applications, 3D gaming and stuff like that, it's where it's mostly going to be noticed. Here in the main menu we can change the layout to a couple different versions. There's a horizontal sliding page view and then there's also a list with nice uh, index tabs and you have the ability to change the way they work and the ordering and everything. You can see um, newly downloaded applications automatically show up in this section. If you want to move something somewhere you just go into the uh, manage mode and say long press it and I'll drag it up to a different section. We'll call it just into the regular applications. Unlike the LG Revolution for Verizon Wireless, uh, the main menu on this device seems to work very well. There's no glitches. It's not difficult to organize. You can do a pinch gesture to quickly access all the categories. Have to hit that bar properly though. And you can see we've got a number of pre-organized and uh, pre-installed 3D applications. and I'll get into more of that a little bit later. We've got seven home screen panels to deal with. Go to number one right there. Show you some of the nice widgets that LG has included. We've got a uh, bookmark widgets, calendar, and we've got multiple sizes of each. Kind of an HTC sense-like feel to the way it's done. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Some separate controls for Wi-Fi. There's also a separate control for Bluetooth. I happen to have a Google Plus installed on this device, and that's the Google Plus widget there. Social networking. Here's uh, Twitter and Facebook feeds. Favorite contacts. A couple of application shortcuts down the bottom. This is the main home screen. You can see AccuWeather powers the clock here. Nice little indicator showing the number of messages that are unread for email and uh, Gmail and things like that. Full power bar has been changed a little from uh, stock. This is uh, how you access LG's task manager. You can see it says six apps are running and I can tap on it here to bring up the task manager and then uh, individually kill applications or stop them all if I wish. This is the nice calendar widget. Works in both month view and agenda views. And I will remove this by long pressing on it just so we get a free screen here and I can show you what I was referring to earlier about um, different sizes of widgets. You can see we have a couple different things to work with here. And it stays in edit mode so you can continue to load up additional 
widgets. So say power control or something I know that's going to fit down there. Then you hit the back button to get out of edit mode. A couple others. Here's a Bluetooth power control, a smaller um, clock calendar, battery widget pre-installed, and this is the email widget. There's two different sizes of that as well, and you can scroll and flip through the images with, uh, sorry, you can scroll and flip through the messages with your thumb. It's quite easy. Getting to the part of the video where things get a little bit tricky, because I'm going to try to show you some 3D functionality. You can see the 3D button right there, but um, you really can't see the effect in a regular video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to long press this 3D button, and it's going to load a custom 3D carousel menu. You can see we've got 3D games, quick access to the 3D camera, the gallery, YouTube as well, and a guide for using the 3D effect, and we're back to games. So let's just quickly go into the 3D gallery. You can see it's really cool looking. I mean, the effect you're just missing out on it by virtue of the fact that you're looking through a regular YouTube video. But it looks really cool to me, and you're able to scroll through here. It's a little bit slow loading up the images maybe, but it's a very cool effect if you're just trying to impress people. And you can tap on one of the images, and you can see this in 3D mode. And if you just tap the 3D button, it goes back to 2D mode, so you can see what the image um, looks like in 2D. You can just flip back and forth right there. Here's the YouTube player pulled up um, showing 3D videos. I'm gonna, it's a fashion show for Dolce & Gabbana. We're on a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, this Hi, device I'm does support boss. the AT&T 3G HSPA network though, even though it's a European spec device. So um, if you can get one of these unlocked, it'll work for AT&T customers. You see you have access to a lot of 3D content on YouTube. Take a look at the games and apps we have at our disposal. Nova is a first person shooter, it's very good. Uh, Asphalt 6 is a driving game. Got Let's Golf 2, we've seen Let's Golf on a number of devices. Uh, it's just a little 3D rendered golf game. And we've got Gulliver's Tales, or Travels rather. It's just a, appears to be a 3D storybook. Quite cool looking. So you've got a lot of really good 3D content. Um, from the 3D space menu there. Uh, much less eye strain than you'd see on HTC's uh, Evo 3D. I really didn't like the display on that at all, even though it's higher resolution. The 3D effects just much better on the LG. So let's take a look at uh, some of the other applications. The music app. So you've got the index letters across the right hand edge. Different views. It's also a special landscape view and you can scroll through a little bit of a rendered look. I don't have much loaded onto the device. And you can see it's obviously it's still playing in the background. We go in the notification area and see the music controls built in up there and as well as your notifications and quick access to certain functions. If I lock the device and unlock it, you see we also have music controls here without having to unlock the device. This is the email application. See, I've got two accounts to configure right here, but you also have access to a combined view. You can see different colors here. There's a green one versus blue showing which one's coming from which account. Here's a 3D message. Oh, actually, it's not really 3D. I was just kidding. You can see you can move through from message to message using the controls here. HTML support. 
naturally works in landscape mode as well. See, it doesn't appear to, oh, there is a multi-touch zooming right there. And the inbox looks fine. Now, I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see it, um, but it's a pretty bad issue from my view. Right here, there's a yellow streak, and right there is a yellow spot. It kind of looks like a burn spot, like the backlight on the display is too bright and showing through. Uh, it's very, very obvious in a lot of different parts of the site when you've got um, you know, basically white or gray based backgrounds. I've not seen this on any other phone. Um, I've tried taking pictures of it and it doesn't really come through properly. I'm hoping it shows a little bit better on the video, but it's really quite annoying. It's just a kind of a yellow s streak there, about the width of the two zeros in 11, and uh, a spot right there about the size of the F and O in both lines there. Really unsightly. And actually, looking at the display with it powered off, I can see where the problem points are. It looks like maybe it's been pushed down a little bit. You can see it maybe a little circle there. You might be able to see an oval shape. And in the upper corner here, you might be able to see a little bit of visual interference there and a circle shape there. Uh, that's Those are the two hot spots on the display. So I'm not sure if it was just a, a production problem with this particular device or if it's widespread, but um, definitely uh, something I've not come across otherwise. Here's the Gmail client, very stock application. Um, you can switch accounts, have multiple accounts configured by just tapping her up there, and you can pull in calendar entries from them all. I'll show you a little bit of that later. Uh, just like you see on every other device. You have access to different folders. Say I can pull up just um, starred messages. You can see one right there. Go into uh, labels and say, just show me the starred ones and then I can look at some of the formatted text and you can see the different fonts, different colors works in landscape mode as well, probably no multi-touch zooming Gmail rarely has it and you can navigate through messages with the controls really nice application, just be um, Cool if you could get the same functionality with all the different email accounts in one combined inbox for a lot of people at least.